Rhino 3, this is Bluebird. Do you read? Over. This is Rhino 3, reading you loud and clear, Bluebird. Over. Rhino 3, change of plans. Jack Frost is heading for the Capache Kindergarten. ETA, three hours. Provide support for a helo. Over. We'll call Bluebird. We're moving out. ETA, two hours. Over and out. Jack Frost? That's an old nickname me and Boris gave Professor Semenov when we were still students. Could it be? He brought me here to Pripyat years ago. Helped me get Tatyana a position too. And now he works for NAR? He must have his reasons. And he's always been a brilliant scientist. He's still my best shot at finding Tatyana. I need to see him. Your old mentor, huh? Try and find him if you think it's important. Just be extra careful. I'm always careful, Olivier. You'll most likely have an escort. Try to sneak past. Don't go Rambo on them. Olga's mother was onto something, something that got her killed. Could it be the key to finding out about the NAR's plans? Just be very careful, my love. I feel you getting closer to the heart of evil. Soon you may reach a point of no return. Should be in the middle of NAR's camp. See if you can slip in unnoticed. Don't get in any fight unless you have to. Sure thing, Mum. And don't worry, I've got my sweater. You've got some issues, don't you? Okay. Now's not the time to get distracted. Locate the lab and try to reach it without drawing attention. You don't want to fight all these guys at once.
arrived at his last name. It's only a matter of time before I find him. Found quantum traces of the portal generator. He must be close. arrived at his last name. It's only a matter of time before I find him. Found quantum traces of the portal generator. You must be close. The echo of a recent wormhole. It should lead me right to him. I have arrived at his last name. It's only a matter of time before I find him. Some traces of the portal generator. He must be close. I detected the echo of a recent wormhole. It should lead me right to him. at his last name. It's only a matter of time before I find him. I detected the echo of a recent wormhole. It should lead me right to him.
ferric chloride and 100 mils of chlordias epoxide. I know that voice. Where have I heard it before? Right away. Send everything to the main laboratory. Who? Who are you? What are you doing in here? That man on the phone. Who was it? Your... Your Kiminyuk. Dear God, please don't hurt me. I asked you a goddamn question. My boss, you mean? I, 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 I don't know his real identity. Uh, almost nobody does, I swear. Do you really want to play it this way? I can see you're scared, and rightfully so. But it seems you're deliberately trying my patience. No, not at all, sir. Uh, please, I, I can't tell you what I don't know. But I can tell you other things. Just ask. Just don't kill me. I can be useful. You'll see. Vanya, my patience is wearing thin. Where are those damned chemicals? Answer him. But casually. Relax. Yes, yes, I, uh, I'm sorry. I'll send them right away. Uh, apologies for the delay. Spare me the excuses and move! I need that Claudia's epoxide and I need it now! You two, continue without me. I hope for your sake you don't screw this up. It would be best if you forgot I was ever here. Of course, of course. I won't tell a soul. Quantum traces of the portal generator. He must be close. Well for you. Why did you have to come back? Huh? This is not nuclear nano diamond battery level low. Thank you. 
look at this tissue structure. This used to be a liver, if you can believe it. We need to collect samples. The brain is hyperactive. Look at the chart. But it still doesn't respond to any stimuli. The previous subject had quite a different reaction. What's behind this difference, I wonder? Age? Vanya? Finally! Who the hell are you? What did you do with Vanya? Stay very still if you want to live. Please don't hurt us. We're scientists. We... Yeah, so was Dr. Mengele. Are you performing a vivisection without anesthesia? Administering shots of typhus? What are you doing exactly? I really want to know. No, nothing like that. We're not beasts. We treat our patients as humanely as possible. But you have to understand that... Scientific advancement requires sacrifice. <laughs> Other people sacrifice. You make it sound sinister. But yes, everything we do is for the greater good. How does it work? Are you shooting these poor souls up full of Chernobylite? I can't talk about that. The NDA we signed is very strict. The penalties... Did you just say NDA? Are you for real? Stop being a corporate stooge and start thinking about your own life. Sure, sure, you're right, of course. We started out giving them shots, but that was just the first stage. We're way past that now. <laughs> uh-huh. It was, you see. The fatality rate was... Uh, it didn't bring the desired results. We've moved from administering nano-solutions to directly editing human genomes to enhance them with Chernobylite. We've developed our own Chernobylite CRISPR. Your patients or subjects, whatever you call them. Especially the locals. What happened to them? Which ones? There were many patients here. Some of them didn't make it past the final phase. The others, we don't know. Don't let him dodge the question. Make him talk. Look, please, can we all try to stay calm? Let us explain. Modifying genomes is only the first step. Next, we induce a state of superconsciousness in the subject's gamma brain waves. It's basic neurology. The sympathetic nervous system begins to release enormous amounts of energy straight to the brain via the thalamic gate at the brainstem. When the thalamic gate opens, the energy flows to the pineal gland and, well, there you go. I don't like to use this term, but it opens a third eye. A third eye? Right. Then what? Enhanced by Chernobylite, the pineal gland can do incredible things. Release all kinds of energy, and even influence physical objects, as in telekinesis. You're torturing people so they can bend spoons with their mind? God, what kind of quacks are you? This is all following the scientific method, believe me. These are closely monitored, replicable experiments. Anyway, when the subject is ready for the final stage, we put them in an induced coma. Contrary to what you might think, it's for their own good. Explain, and fast. What is this final stage? Our boss calls it communion. It's when the subject's gamma brain waves interact with Chernobylite's mental waves. Or, well, to tell you the truth, we don't know exactly what it is. Chernobylite is like a virus, in a way. It's not exactly inorganic matter, but neither is it a living organism. It's something in between. And it produces a type of brainwave, even though it clearly has no structured organic tissue. But what's the purpose of this communion? This is where it gets really interesting. You know that Chernobylite can be used to create wormholes, right? You've been doing it yourself. But these wormholes are special. Haven't you noticed? They're not a purely physical phenomenon. I don't understand. What else could they be? We know what singularities and the tunnels should look like. We know what they are in theory. But has anyone actually been inside one before? Bullshit. I've studied Chernobylite too. The exotic energy it contains is powerful enough to create quasi-black holes and passages between them. We thought so too, at first. But think about this. What if there was an organism, or a virus, an entity powerful enough to create its own singularities? No biological organism could encapsulate that kind of energy, or survive if it did. A living entity would be torn to shreds. But Chernobylite is not a normal biological organism, is it? 
We have no idea what it is. Just try and consider the possibility that the wormholes you're walking into are not something created outside of Chernobylite. They are Chernobylite. You're traveling through the veins and corridors of its multidimensional body. But what does that have to do with this communion thing? Isn't it obvious? We're trying to communicate with Chernobylite, or somehow influence it through the mental energy of our subjects. But getting inside this thing's mind, or whatever it is, must be a truly disturbing experience. You're fucking insane, both of you. You need to stay away from the morphine cabinet for a while. I've heard enough. Who's your patient here? I'm not sure, but it... She must have been carefully selected. Selected? How? Did she volunteer? Or was she maybe run down and captured by soldiers in the woods? Talk! I'm not familiar with the selection process. Our boss would know. But we know very little about him. What's your boss in charge of, exactly? The entire biotech division, pretty much everything Chernobylite related, but mainly the impact on human physical and psychological functions. Clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. Hmm. How does this work with Chernobylite? It's similar to a standard gene editing tool. We take specialized protein from a certain bacteria, modify it with Chernobylite, and then target the exact genes we want to modify. Wait, I know more about physics than genetics, but CRISPR is usually done on embryos, right? And it takes time, sometimes even years, for mutations to show. Our boss developed his own methods. The process is applied directly in the subject's body. The speed of the mutations has increased exponentially. It no longer takes years, but weeks, sometimes mere days. Marvelous, isn't it? Enough. All I've got from you so far is a bunch of gibberish. I want to see the actual research. Where do you keep your data? All the research data? Check the database in this computer. Everything can be accessed from here. It's password protected, isn't it? Promise not to kill us and we'll tell you. Don't worry, I don't give a shit about you. Password. 23 hash 98 S dollar. Listen to me very carefully, Igor. This research, this data, it's too dangerous to exist. My people died because of it. Delete everything. It won't bring my mother back, but at least no one will profit from her death and the deaths of others. I'm sorry, Olga. Nobody deserves to die so horribly. I was hoping for some good news, but perhaps I was foolish. My mother, these people, they were all just used, processed. How could anyone do something like this? Anyway, did you find anything of value? Not sure yet, 
bizarre theories about Chernobylite, mostly. I don't know if I want to get into the details yet. Try me. I'm not a bookworm like you, but I'm not stupid either. Well, NAR seems to think Chernobylite is like a giant turtle that carries our universe on its back. They figure they can tame it and ride it wherever they want. Like a pet. A turtle? It's just a metaphor, but the scientific theory behind it is no less insane. Right. Uh, thanks for trying, I guess. Man. Got a minute? Sure. What is it? I need to ask you something, Igor. And you have to be absolutely fucking straight with me. Whoa, Mikhail. Should I be scared? No, but I need you to really take me seriously. I sometimes get the feeling that you don't. What are your plans with NAR and Kozlov? I don't know yet. Why? Because I've got a feeling that you'd be willing to parlay with them, even come to some kind of agreement. And I want to make sure you understand that I won't fucking allow it. Is that so? What would you have me do, Mikhail? Annihilate the motherfuckers! That's what I'd have you do! Hang Kozlov from the highest branch of the tallest tree in Pripyat! Look, I came here to find Tatyana. That's what matters to me. Right, right. That's what matters to you. And what about me? There's a lot of anger in you, Mikhail. I get it, but... But what? But your motherfucking pain is better than mine? You pose as a cool and level-headed guy, but sometimes you act like an egocentric prick. What do you want from me, Mikhail? Tatiana is your goal, not mine. I will have my closure, and I'll have my revenge. You have no problem using me for your mission whenever it suits you. There may come a time when I use you for mine. Please, just try and cool off. Don't do anything rash. No promises, Professor. No fucking promises. Mikhail, you've been a- Caps gathering and- Actually... I'm wounded, Igor. Igor, you gotta help me. I'm... Thanks. I usually take care of myself, you know? Hi, Olga. I was wondering if you could share some of the know-how you've picked up in the zone. I'd be... Fantastic. I'm ready to learn, oh great huntress. No jokes while we're training, Ross. All right, it seems I've got my work cut out for me. This is going to be extremely difficult, maybe even dangerous. I thought you were going to teach me how to effectively pack a bag. How could that be dangerous? Dangerous for my mental health. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Firstly, I want to address the fact that, for some reason, I'm the only one who can teach you the art of packing. Presumably because I'm a woman. I find that sexist, extremely, and offensive. I beg your pardon? Thank you. That said, I do have some tricks up my sleeve, or should I say, up my bag, <laughs> uh, that I can share with you. Because frankly, Igor, when I look at the warehouse and how you furnish and organize it, it makes me weep. You? Weep? I never noticed. 
I'm weeping on the inside. My soul bleeds when I see this chaotic trash heap of grime and despair. No clean lines, no aesthetic, just a man cave reeking of testosterone. That's a little bit harsh, don't you think? But fear not, as a wise man once said, when the student is ready, the teacher reveals herself. And you're the teacher? Yes, I am. Here's the first secret. It's all in your head. What do you mean? The chaos in your head translates into the chaos in your inventory. The more organized you are, the clearer your thoughts, the purer your mind, the better your packing skills. But... But, but, nothing. Don't argue. Don't deny it. Don't fight the truth. Just be silent and absorb. I'll let you think on this for a couple minutes, or hours, 